Hello there. We have exciting news for our Cape Tonian viewers to this channel. Go to www.thewoodgurus.co.za or call them on 07858493200. Order above 500 rands bry or firewood, delivered and packed by the Wood Gurus Cape Town, and receive 10% off your entire order by using the discount code KOB10 at the checkout. And here's to a lecker bry. Hi there. Hope you're all doing well. All right, so I've had a few requests on um, putting out um, some videos on how to do certain rigs. So uh, actually a, a, a subscriber of mine requested me to do a video. So I did one personally for him, uh, Warren. And uh, yeah, I'm going to load it up. So stick around and I'll, I'll uh, it's in very layman's terms. If you're a beginner, this will, uh, this will kind of give you a, a head start. Um, it's the very basics. Remember, it's my take on things, guys. They do many different ways, um, but this is the absolute basic uh, for a cob trace. Um, there's variations as well, so I just gave gave the most basic um, way to to set it up. So I hope you guys find it handy, and uh, yeah, it was aimed for Warren, but uh, free, feel free to take from it what you need. And yeah, I'm hoping to post uh, post one every week, uh, a fixed trace, running trace, snap off trace, whatever the case, pulley. So yeah, all right, guys, stick around. Hope you enjoy. Warren, how's it? All right, so. I think the first trace I'll show you is it's a running trace. Um, I use it for cob and uh, pretty much most of my my fishing. Um, it's just uh, it's more. What makes it so much better is it's if your fish bites, you'll get it's it's a direct line to your reel um, to your rod tip. Uh, but I'll show you what I mean. So first of all, look, I use a 6 ounce, this is a 5 ounce, I don't know what size you use, but you need to get yourself grab sinker, especially for Macassar. Alright, grab sinkers are the way to go, anything less, don't get the ones with the, uh, there's ones that you get with the weed eater cord, that red and green cord, doesn't work well. So these are basically grab sinkers, throw them in, they land in the sand and they get stuck. But now what happens is when you pull it out, these barbs here, they suppose they unclip like that. And as you're coming out, it unclips and then it drags on the bottom. It doesn't get hooked. So what you've got to make sure is that you set these barbs soft enough that your sinker comes in with these unclipped. So you'll see it the first time. You'll struggle to get this back in because hooking every time you pull. You're going to think you've got a massive fish on and it's just a lie. <laughs> so yeah, make sure. So all you've got to do is, if it's too tight, just unclip it, grab the ends and just open it a bit and, and work with it. and Just so it clips in nice and snug. Nothing too heavy, it mustn't smash in, but you'll figure that out. I mean, you're not, uh, you're, you're a wise guy, I'm sure. So you'll figure that out. All right, so let's get on to the main line. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare the sinker first. All right. So I don't know what line you use. Um, most of the guys use a, a lighter line. So if there is a fish on and this does get stuck and you pull and you break, it's going to break your sinker off and your fish comes in. So make sure your main line and your leader line with the bait on and the hook is stronger than your sinker line. That's important. You don't want to lose a big fish. Because if this was stronger than everything else, your whole trace will come off and this will come back. So I'm just going to take... This is just for for um, example purposes. This is point, uh, five oh. Alright. So what I'm going to use, just to, just to show you. Alright, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to keep it in the framework. But this is very short. Alright. Usually what I do is about, about an arm's length, to under my arm, all right, 
So I would say that is, let's do measurements. Eh? Hold on, give me a second. Then I can give you precisely what it is. Let's take a look. I would say about, da -na -na -na. yeah, I'd say about 60 centimeters. That should be fine. Yeah. I'd say 60 centimeters is more or less all right. There are other rigs to use where you use a shorter trace, especially for your khali, but I'm not going to confuse you now. This is cob. Think cob. All right. So once I've got my, my end, I'm going to use what you call a clinch knot. All right. So that goes through the top of your, your eye there. You'll find some sinkers have a swivel and it doesn't really matter. Some guys prefer a swivel. Um, I'm just going to cut this off to make it easy. I hope I haven't lost you yet. Right, so here's your clinch knot. It's, it's through there. If you can see there. See, it's through there. And then you're going to just wrap it around the main line. So that's one, two, three. 0.503 times is fine, it's it's a thick line, but I would go like about four, this is just for demo, once you've got it around there, okay, let me just do that again in case you didn't see that, all right, so you've wrapped it around, so basically what we've done is, essentially, we've put it through the loop, all right, can you see that, and we you can turn it, and you twist it, and you twist it, I'll do it about three times, that's about four. Then this tag end I've got here, that guy there, this chap here, he goes in that hole over here. Can you see the line where it opens there? We're going to put that in there. Can you see that? Oops. Very difficult. Anyway, it goes through there, and then you pull it all tight. Can you see I've got it through there? There we go. And I'm going to pull it tight. But before I pull it all the way tight, lick it, spit on it, whatever. So it run, so it's wet, so it runs smoothly and tightens up. That's gonna go nowhere. That's gonna go nowhere. Cut that off. I never had anything unwind. Then what you can also do, which I usually do, because I'm quite uh, fussy, I take a lighter and I just burn that end bit. But you don't have to. That is not a must. There we go. And then before it's dry. I'll just do that, then it's nice. Anyway, cool. All right, there we go. Your line is ready. So let's do your 60 whatever. I'll go to my arm here, that's fine. I'm gonna cut that off. All right. Now we need a swivel. So you get, I'm sure you know you get different kinds of swivels. Depends on your budget. Um, like I say, you get uh, power swivels and all these other fancy swivels. So here we go. These are the normal cheap swivels, the barrel swivels. All right. There's power swivels, those ones. So let's just put a power swivel on, just for fun. No, I'm going to use this one because it's bigger to see. And you do the same knot. One, two, three. And I'll stick it in the hole and I'll put it tight. That's it done. So your sinker is now set up. I'll burn the end. Right. Once you've done it enough times, you'll get quite uh, proficient at it. Boom. Right. Dangle, dangle. Right. Now, this is what we've got to do to get you onto the picture. So, Mr. Warren, visualize well, this line is coming from your rod. It's coming from your reel through your rod, out the tip of your rod, and coming down to you now. So this is your main line that's coming to your, your sinker. Now you want to set up your trace. So what we do is, we first need to, okay, for, for easy sakes, I'm going to make the, the hook trace first. All right. So we've got that distance. Now we need a hook trace. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my line just a bit more than the than what you need because you're going to do knots, and then you pull it down. All right, just say to the bottom of your sinker, and you cut that off. Now that's the that's what you're going to work with. There we go. That's what you're going to work with. That's your sinker. Your sorry, your hook trace. Right. So let's do the following. I'm going to do what you call a. Um, I think it's the super snell knot. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. But this is basically how it goes. I'll send you a link. Uh, the guy from Zulook. I don't know if you know him. He's a good guy to follow. He uh, he has this power. <coughs> a swivel. A snell knot. So basically what we do is. This goes. Around like that. And then you're. It's one big loop. You take one big loop. You see. So there we go. They're not touching. That's your loop. Just go past through your fingers just past your finger there just past your hook and then you've got this set up then what you're going to do is this is confusing i've got to send you the link okay i'm going to wrap it once you've probably lost me already because i can't really show you it's too many fingers i'll send you the link the very good one one two three four, five, six. All right, let me pull that guy. All right, here we go. All right, super strong, not super strong. I don't know what. Forget the name, man. Anyway, it doesn't matter. There we go. That's on your focus, 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 focus. I don't know if it's focusing. Anyway, all right. So I'll send you the link. Have a look at that. That's perfect for this. But then you must never forget. You've got to bring your your long lead through the. Seriously? There we go. All right. Well, now what's important here? I don't know if you know these things. I'm just going through the basics, Warren. Um, see this if you look at this that line comes out the front over here it gives that the tension it, it, goes, it gives the hook uh, movement this way if it was to come out the other way you could actually miss the it could actually pull out of the mouth where this is the standard you've got to have that like that it comes into the back and out the front your main line Okay, perfect. All right, so now <clears throat> do you clip your bait when you cast? You should be clipping your bait when you cast. What does that mean? There's a little hook on your clip your bait, all right, or your dingle dangle or whatever you use. Okay, so it's better for aerodynamics and all that stuff. So, what I'll do now is I'll measure it. That's clipped on, there's tension there. Now, I'm going to measure up here. And I'm going to put on another swivel. All right. And then keep my finger there. I know that's the height I need, the length. And we're going to do the same clinch knot. One, two, three. Simple as that. Right. And cut it off. And give that a bit of a burn. There we go. Okay, so far so good. Now, I did mention what I forgot to do was before I put on the On that swivel onto the hook, put your float on. If you're going for cob, you've got to have a float. you got to have a float. Um, if it's on the bottom, the crabs are going to get it, and you're going to be wasting your time. 
so yeah I'm trying to make this video as quick as I can but it's never that quick <laughs> all right so we are set now we've got your hook and your sinker so this here is it's, it's free running all right so what we guys normally do is they take a toothpick okay and you jam the toothpick in there sort of just above just above your bait I'd say if your baits on there about there okay that's not uh, that's the one option then you find some of the guys they won't use a float if you use a dingle dangle I'm not going to show you a dingle dangle yet I don't know if you even know what it is but these are just the basics for now like that I used to catch a lot of cob like this the other option was they used to take rubber uh, here we go used to cut some rubber foam right and then cut a small piece and then what they would do is is they would put it around uh, just to give you an example this is another option more old school um, so let's just say just something as simple as that something as simple as that a bit of foam stick it on your hook like that and take your cotton and wrap it round and make it tight and then you put your bait on top of that that acts as a float as well and support for your bait your sardine and stuff like that because sardine can get plucked as well another very good hint is throw frozen bait don't let it defrost um, you need to get a decent cooler box because um, you're going to struggle you're going to throw soft bait it's going to chump for a while it's going to be gone um, so yeah anyway that's the second option is this the first option standard good old fashioned float all right so we've got your sinker back to the basic sinker and your hook we're almost there now your running trace okay here is your line I'm going to get a thicker line so you can see this is the guy I'm going to actually tie it up here. No, it's fine. So this comes from your rod. Very important. Your main line. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your sinker. All right, your sinker. Stick it through there. So your sinker is now running along your main line like this, right? Okay, so what do you do next? Go to the end of your line. Get yourself... Raid your daughter or your sister or your, I don't know how old you are. Get yourself a little bead. A small little bead. You put that in on the end. That's going to act as a stopper against. So you've got now your main line on it is your sinker, your bead. And now you're going to put your hook trace on here on the very end. With what? A pinch knot again all right now we're going to turn a one two three four whatever you want to do tighten up boom and cut boom right so we are done that is your running trace all right so what makes it so special so first of all if you look over here everything is captured up here so nothing's going anywhere let me just show you what it does when this is into the ground you've thrown in it locks into the ground right so that is now in the sea in the ocean and your lines going towards your rod down on the on the shore this is now floating up up for the cop to come and take not on the floor because your crabs are going to eat it it's floating up with your bait then what happens is as soon as he pulls this let me shift this camera a little bit maybe we can see better all right here we go as soon as they bite on here all right it's a direct line 
to your rod so it's going to pull it's going to pull on your rod so there's your rod as soon as it pulls there's no um it's a direct it's sensitive directly to your line so that what makes this an absolute awesome running trace is one of the better traces um, and there's it hooked on and now you can throw it and as soon as it hits the water all right as soon as it hits the water it's gonna clip out watch boom and then it floats off all right so that my friend is the the running trace and with a second option is take that float off and use one of these floats we use both floats it doesn't matter all right so that's your running trace for a cob All right, so that's with the float. All right, so the other option is with a dangle, dingle, dangle. So what you can do is you can go to your local store, your fishing store, get yourself a dingle, dangle. But what you'll have to do is it clips onto the end, and uh, you're going to have to change your um, your setup over here because it's going to be too too long with your dangle on. So you're going to have to shorten, shorten your hook trace to accommodate for the dingle dangle. It might work, but you're going to have to align that up. So what I actually do is, uh, for dangles, I actually make my own. Uh, let me just get a knife. Oh, here we go. My old dirty knife, gross. All right. So let me just a piece let's just turn this way so you can kind of see it's just an old uh, high density foam pool pool noodle not the sharpest knife all right there we go so what you want to do is cut yourself a little strip move this up and then what you can do is just taper the ends make it a bit streamlined not too fussy and then something like that all right quite simple now what you've got to do is once that is done you need to buy yourself some Dacron cheap stuff all right that's the the basis of it all and you want to burn the end off here melt that end there we go done and you're going to need little circles that you can also buy your little uh, dangle circle that clips on on your sinker oh, sorry on your yeah on your sinker so what I do now is I take put it through all right and do a good old-fashioned granny knot I can promise you this has never come loose there's your granny knot all right then you've got to pull this baby tight and you'll see it'll pull through on itself Watch there. There we go. And you see there? That's tucked in. Where's the camera? Let me guess it's not going to focus. Anyway, you just pull it tight. That bit of melted... <coughs> that one, that little ball, stops it from pulling through. Alright. So that is good to go. Alright. Now, your second move is to cut a line down the middle. All right, because you want to run this Dacron. You won't believe it. This knife of mine is embarrassing. Hold on. Ah. Here we go. 
Right, just cut a line down the middle of your of your foam. I mean, this you can do quickly, quickly. All right, we've got a line down the middle there. What's going to happen is you're going to place your place your Dacron in the middle, push it down into the middle, and then bring the circle up to there. All right, just to the bottom like that. Okay. Now, what I don't use, I don't use super glue on here. Some guys use super glue. I think. I think super glue used to eat this. The chemical reaction, not good. So now we're going to take some cotton and secure this. Just a couple of wraps. You want to get a medium to heavy cotton. This is actually very light. It's the wrong cotton, but uh, it's just for demo purposes. And uh, I, you know, the the pool needle works fine, but you can find that the fish actually um, they actually destroy it quite quickly. So I've actually got an old slip slop that I cut up, but I'm just the process stays the same. I just want to show you the process. So I would I would prefer to use a slip slop. Don't don't use the the pool noodle unless you have to. So that is basically your bait carrier. Now what you've got to do is tie another good old granny knot over there on the other side, right? See there, there's your circle. There's your granny knot. And bring it down as close as you can to the end there. Just a little bit. Leave about not even five centimeters, five millimeters, just a little a little section like that. There we go. Right? Focus people. No. Yes. Alright, so, so we are there. Okay. Now we're gonna cut it off just over here. And of course my scissors and my gear is never perfect, eh? There we go. There's your dingle dangle. Uh, there we go. So, how does this work? Ba -da -da -da. Where is my hook? Here's my hook. Okay. Here we go. I actually use a dangle plus a float, so it's. It's not a it's not a problem. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna just open up that Dacron there and stick your hook through in the middle. Can you see there? Let's give that another go. Put your there we go. There we go. Perfect. Let me just burn that off. Alright. And that is your dingle dangle, so you'll put your sardine on there. And when you're ready to rock and roll, you'll clip your dangle. And all the good stuff. Up like that. And then once it hits the floor, with your bait, boom, off it goes. But you'll have to set the, uh, the distance on this, obviously. If you're going to use a dangle, you make your hook a bit shorter. Otherwise, this will be too far down and you won't be able to clip it. Quite simple. All right, so that's with a dingle dangle. Um, a lot of guys use the dangles for cob. Uh, I've caught a few on with them and without them. So, yeah, happy days, guys. Hope it helps.